What is up, people? So today we're talking about Logic Pro. It's a recording software that is for Mac. We're gonna go over three tips that you probably aren't using that will, uh, one of them will improve your mixes and the sounds you're getting, and then two of them will improve your workflow and really speed up um, just working in Logic Pro X. Before I jump into the lesson, be sure to subscribe below. I'm putting out new lessons every week, uh, ranging from Roland SPDSX to drum lessons to transcriptions to whatever, so hit subscribe, ding that notification bell so you get all the notifications, and um, yeah, let's just get into this lesson. All right, people, so here we go. Tip number one is a plugin that is going to improve your mixes, add a bunch of punch, a bunch of attack to your drums, um, and do it in a special way. So let's take a listen to what we have right now in this mix. All right, so gushy snare drum, kind of like dirty, dirty drums. This first tip that I have for you is using a plugin that Logic has stock for free, and it's called the Enveloper. It's this plugin right here. If you go to Dynamics, Enveloper. So I've put it onto the room mic here. So with room mics, let's go to um, the recall default. So this is how it'll look. So that's not turned on yet. Let's listen to this room mic. Okay, pretty cool, pretty standard my room. You know, this is before I had actually fully treated this session is full before I had fully treated my room. And um the room mic sounds fine, but there's a lot of drywall and the drums sound super 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 far away. I don't even know what mic I was using, but I don't love how it sounds. But I kind of want these drums to have a little more attack, a little more punch. So what I usually would do is I would put a compressor on it. So the problem when you use a compressor is it brings up not just the, because I'm trying to get more transient. I'm trying to, the Enveloper is a transient designer, and that's what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to take this room mic and get more transients out of them. I'm trying to get more attack, more punch. When that snare hits, I want more snare. Um, but using a compressor to do that, which you usually can do that with a compressor, a compressor not only brings up the transient and makes them smack more, but it also brings up a lot of the room noise, a lot of whatever else is in the mix, depending on where you set your threshold. So because this room mic, because this, the drums are so far away from the mic, if I start compressing it, I get more attack, I get more punch, I get more whatever out of the drums, but I also get a lot more hi-hat, and I also get a lot more just room, a lot of noise. So that's what the compressor does. It kind of brings out the transients more, but it also brings up the room noise. This enveloper, it has a way right here to gain up the transient but then also use this release gain down here to control how much other stuff you bring up. So it's going to allow us to get more transient out of the drums without bringing up the room noise and without bringing up like hi-hats and washy cymbals and stuff. So um, check this out. So you can hear the transients are coming up now, but um, it's getting a little gritty and distorted. So what you're going to want to do is mess with these time knobs down here. And what this is, is it's deciding how long the transient is with this one and how long the release is with this one. So um, So if I go real extreme like that, you can see that oh, the, the transients are dialed 
to you know 79 million now and there's no room noise and no nothing that got brought up but it sounds a little distorted a little wonky so i have this preset this is kind of a nice little balance i found so I'll toggle it on and off, and you'll be able to hear the drums sound far away. There's not a lot of attack, not a lot of transient. And then when I hit it on, you can just tell that like the room noise doesn't come up, but the drums start to hit harder. That's the enveloper on a room mic. You can also use this on a um, parallel compression track. So this is a parallel compressed track. This is a, all of, you know, uh, I'm sending, you know, a lot of kick, a lot of snare, a little bit of rack floor, and then a tiny bit of overheads, and then I'm compressing the just insanity out of it. You know, we're set to, we're pretty much limiting at this point. It sounds cool, but I, I still want a little more attack. I want a little more transient. I want this drums to smack a little bit harder. And again, we can use this enveloper tool to do that. So, because I've already compressed it a ton, if I start, if I throw like another compressor on it, I'm going to start getting a lot of weird noises, some hisses, because it's just too much compression and it's going to start bringing up, you know, everything in that mix, including, you know, the noise of the preamps I use and all that stuff. So, if I use this enveloper though, So it's more subtle here, but you can tell the snare drum just hits a little bit harder. It snaps a little bit harder. It gives you a little more in your face. And um, that's really what we're going for. That's really useful, especially in the context of a, of a mix. Um, just bringing out those transients a tiny bit more can really go a long way in a mix. All right, so the second thing we're going to talk about is saving channel presets. And not just channel presets of like your inputs, but also bus channel presets. So first thing that I'll do just to show you uh, you know how you can save these presets is I have a template set up this is the template I start all my sessions with it's got all my drums grouped together like I like it and a vocal mic if I'm doing a lesson you'll notice that all of these channels already have a bunch of EQ compression and all of this gets me in the ballpark I also have all these um, buses set up and like I can literally track something highlight all this enable all these EQs and and I'm like there. I'm ready to go. It's that mix is pretty dialed in. So, the value of having a template set up is just that. You can just set it up and you're there and it sounds great. But sometimes you're working in a session someone else sent you and you know, you're tracking your drums but you want to be able to pull up all your presets. So, it's nice to have templates, but it's also nice to have each um each track that you do kind of set up and dialed in and saved as its own preset. So let me show you how to do that. So let's go to um, the kick drum. Let's go to save channel strip setting as. It's going to bring up the save dialog box. And all, of, all you're going to do is save these in a spot where you want to save them. Notice that it's under the music tab, under audio music apps, under channel strip settings, and under track. And that's where all this stuff goes. So if you see right now, if I say, you know, if I click on this and I want to pull up a, a new channel strip setting, that's what I have all down here. And a lot of times you'll just see an endless list on people's computers because people don't know that you can actually save these in folders, which is why each of these has a little fold out menu. So if I go back to save channel strip setting as music, audio music apps, channel strip setting, track, I can create a new folder inside this track folder that says, you know, like, um, Feb 2019 pre's. So this is my February of 2019 presets, and I can go to, go to name it, and I can say kick. Then I can go to my next channel, and I can save channel strip setting as, as, select that folder I just created, put it as snare. Go here, save channel strip setting as, go there, and I can say 
snare bottom. And I can do that for all my tracks. And now, if I pull up a new session, and I'm setting up this session, and I want to make this one audio track I have, you know, my favorite snare drum setting, I can go to this settings list at the top of the channel strip, and I can go down to February 2019 presets, and I can go to snare. Boom. It, it's set up. It's ready to go. So you can also do this with buses. Um, so these buses over here are some of my favorite buses. I have like a drum crush or a parallel compression track. I have bus set up that I run my kick drum to that I add a bunch of attacks so that people can hear it on iPhones and stuff. If I want to save this kick attack plugin uh, bus setting, all I have to do is same thing. Go all the way up to the top, hit save channel strip setting as. And then you'll notice, you know, on all the audio input tracks we were doing, we were saving it in this track folder here. But if you have a bus, where you're going to want to save it is in the bus folder. And you can add kick bus add attack, and then that's set up in there. Hit save, and then you can go to, on your bus, you can go to user channel strip setting, and then kick bus add attack is there. So that's a super quick way to, you know, pull up presets and get mixing a lot quicker, set up projects a lot quicker than if you're, you know, just doing this by hand every single time, adding an EQ to this, adding a compressor to this, adding a, make sure that you maximize your time. And the biggest tip of all of it is that you can save these inside folders so that this list here, when you pull it up, because if you don't use folders, this list will just get out of hand. You'll have to scroll for 70 different titles, but you can set up these little folders and it gets you, you know, in the ballpark really quick, really clean. All right, so this third tip is setting up your own EXS24 sampler so that you can have your own MIDI instruments. Um, so this is a super nice trick. I made a video a couple weeks back that was titled, like, how to run a couple different ways you can run click tracks or something like that. And one of the ways that I make click tracks for a lot of the songs that I do is I actually build them. I don't really like, um, if, I'm do if I'm building tracks for a live show... Uh, I, I don't use like a blippy click track because I just don't like those. I use much more realistic uh, click tracks and I also put count ins in it. And instead of having to like set up a vocal mic and count one, two, three, four or whatever for all the tracks that I'm making click and count tracks for, I've actually set up a MIDI instrument to do that for me. So um, how, what you can do is you can go in Logic, go to make a new track, select software instrument, and then out of this whole list, do a stereo EXS24 sampler and then hit create. So if your library is not open, you can open it. And you see here, I've created all of these um, MIDI instruments. Some of them are snare drums and stuff that I use to sample or play stuff. And then you see this tempo sounds. This is actually the instrument I was using in the video the other week where you can pull up your hit command K to pull up this keyboard and... Five. Six, seven, eight, one, two, three, four. You can see this instrument is actually giving me counts, one, two, three, four, samples that I've placed in, and then click samples. So I can hit record. One, two, one, two, three, four. I've now recorded this MIDI track that I can. Click it all, highlight it all, increase the velocity, make sure it's quantized to the 16th note, and I can go. So now I have a click track that I can instantly slow down. One, two, one, two. So this is a lot better than placing audio because audio takes forever to, you know, drag to the right place and whatever. So let me show you how to set up your own instrument like this. Software instrument, EXS24. I'm going to say don't open the library. Okay, so now I have a new EXS24. All right, so this is my new thing. This is where I want to drop whatever samples I want to create a MIDI instrument out of. So what I need to do now is hit the I up top to open up this dialog. And I need to click here on the, the middle part of whatever this is to bring up this EXS24 editor. Um, and we're going to edit by this button right here. 
when I click that button, brings up this dialog. This is where you can drop any samples you want. So I obviously have dropped um, some clicks and counts, but let's say, you know, for whatever reason, we want to put some snare drums on here. I'm going to go to my samples. I'm going to go to this Aaron Sterling, and let's say I want to do... Um, say I really have one of his, this LeBron's James. I really, I really need a, yeah, I really need this sample right here. So I found it on my computer. I'm going to drag it up. And now I have the LeBron's James samples dropped in. For samples like this, all I want when someone, I just want to assign this sample to a certain key on the MIDI keyboard. I don't want this to be able to pitch shift. I don't want anything. All I want is on one key on the keyboard. I press that key. It fires this trigger. So I'm going to pick which key that I want. I'm going to pick C1, and I'm going to make sure that the range of it is C1 to C1. So now you can see that down here, I can drag these key ranges by either assigning them like that, or when I drag this little bar down here, it changes the range. So. I can assign it a, a literal pitch, or I can just pick one note and have that be the pitch. But as you're hearing right now, this is pitch shifted because this little pitch dialog box right here is checked. If I uncheck this, it's now pitched right. But if I just tap very fast, you'll hear that the sample cuts off. I don't want that. All I want is when you hit C1, no matter how long you hold it, it plays the whole sample of the snare drum. So I can go to one shot, click this, and now, no matter how long I click or no matter how hard I press on a MIDI keyboard, it is going to play that sample just like it is. Now I want to save it. Otherwise, I'm going to have to redo this every single time. So to save this instrument, what you want to do is you want to go to Instrument, and you want to go to Save. And that is going to pull up. Again, let's be really careful. Sometimes Logic doesn't always pull up these folder structures, right? And you'll end up saving presets in a folder that it's not supposed to go there. So you're in Music. You go to Audio Music Apps. And then you go to Sampler Instruments. And then you can see this is where all the other instruments that I've set up are. And I can go over here and type in, a, you know, a LeBron's James Snare. Anytime I go to set up a new EXS instrument, I go to Software Instrument, I go to EXS24, and I go to Open Library you'll see that it opens up my library to all of my, you know, things that I've set up. So if I want to go to that one we just did, which is the LeBron James snare, I have it set up now. And if I find C1, I have a snare drum now. So whatever it is, this can even help in programming. You know, this doesn't have to be click tracks and that stuff. This can be, you know, when you're programming, it's so much easier to me to have, you know, your favorite snaps set up on a MIDI instrument like this that you can play and build a track out like that than it is to like drag that sample all around. And it, it's, that's a pain. And it being MIDI, all of this instantly shifts in tempo when you change tempos in a project. That's kind of the last tip I have for you is making your own MIDI instruments to make, you know, your workflow easier. All right. So we talked about the enveloper, which is like the transient designer and how we can use that to improve our mixes, give more, more of our drums punch and attack and just in your faceness. We talked about organizing presets for all your channel strips and all your buses to pull that stuff up super quick, way quicker than I used to. I used to dial all that stuff in every single time over and over again. And then the third thing we talked about was setting up our own MIDI instruments for things like click tracks and count offs and stuff like that. So I hope you enjoyed the lesson. Uh, remember to subscribe below, hit that notification bell. Hit me in the comments. What are your favorite Logic Pro tips? You know, are there presets you love? Are there um, plugins that you love? Is there some kind of feature like flex time or something that you love? Like put in the comments, what is your favorite Logic Pro tip? And um, yeah. Thanks for stopping by. I will see you in the next lesson.